Oh, man. Okay, we'll go there. It's funny. If you remove the Baja logo, suddenly this boat is more appealing to some. We'll get into that more later. But let's just table the brand debate, and for now, just pretend this is some other make. Maybe, say, a scarab, or perhaps an act of thunder. Give me a break, act of thunder. You can't even begin to tell me this boat belongs in the same category. Okay, now that we're all on this same page, let's just stay in that space for a minute, and let's look at what we have. You mean loud-ass, ridiculously colored, in-your-face, oversized, logoed poser machine? It's for ignorant weasels. We have a true 30-foot haul, an offshore-style deep V, and high freeboard, creating a haul capable of running in the mid-70s or beyond. Yeah, it uses a running pad, because Baja lacks the IQ to run steps in the haul. Style-wise, the boat has this contemporary theme with these hard, crisp lines, all while giving the feel of brute functionality, without giving a sense of feeling basic or overly minimalistic. <laughs> Congrats, you just described a Hummer H2. Admittedly, some materials in the cockpit and cabin are of average quality, but thanks to some wizardry of style, don't give a feel of being poor substitution or low rent. Oh, really? Because for a mica particle board for a countertop just screams high quality. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay, sorry. I can't do a whole video like this, guys. My very subtle point I'm trying to make here is this boat, well, really just any Baja, has two very different camps of people. This brand is white hot for some and ice cold for others, and that's the way it's been for, oh, 30 years. Hailing from Bucyrus, Ohio, otherwise known as Thunderboat Row of the Midwest... I'm kidding, no one calls it that, but hey, how many other towns in the U.S. besides Miami can boast they had more than one manufacturer of GoFast, huh? Checkmate was the other one, by the way. Anyways, this 30 was the replacement for the 29 Outlaw starting in 2004. The model was technically available until 2016, although things get weird past 2008. I'll spare you the confusing recent history, but let's just say after 2008, Baja became pretty much a shell of its former self, as sadly the company became less about fiberglass gel coat and molds and more about business strategy lawyers and failed promises. Ugh, fine, I'll mention it. This guy got involved for a few years. There, you happy? I talked about it. Anyways, the 30 was by all measures a complete redesign of the 29, really sharing little but the overall styling and image. Construction methods had changed a bit. It's rumored more attention was spent on hull design and even aerodynamics. I'll argue that the style was a fairly strong priority for this boat. Well, and really just the outlaw model lineup in general. There are just some of these details that were so very key to the boat. Elements like the custom vents, the claw-like hinges, and even parallelogram-shaped hatches over the traditional squares. And of course, the bolt-on tubular platform that really went against the grain of typical design for this era. All this stuff just added up to create a very specific sort of edgier design that set it apart from its competitors and even the rest of Baja's lineup that had more of a traditional look. There were all kinds of little things that were revised for the 30 that don't immediately jump out at first glance. Examples being like how the tubular platform received the flatter inset bar so you could actually stand on it in bare feet without being in agonizing foot pain. All this little stuff was very subtle that didn't necessarily rocket the 30 heads or tails above the 29 or catapult the outlaw into the next tier, but Baja understood how to make a successful product line stand out from the crowd and were fairly gifted at marketing and creating a flashy design. Simply put, they weren't going to kill off the golden goose. Honestly, I don't have many complaints. I know, right? I actually dig the redesigned cabin layout. The convertible V-berth makes sense because go-fast V-berths traditionally suck for overnighting. This new design has a lot more room for sleeping, or what you hope to be a wild threesome with Miss Daddy Issues USA and her drunk roommate with the self-esteem issues, and the nearly all vinyl materials for the cabin, combined with the very large dual hatches, makes mopping up and airing out the sticky stank of skank a little less vomit-inducing. 
Moving out of the herpes shed, the cockpit layout is pretty commonplace. Seating is nice, the rear bench feels deep and secure, and the bucket seats are pretty nice too. The drop downs are okay, but I don't know, they feel a bit clunky. Trust me, I'm a fan of simple over some over-engineered complex hydraulic or electric system that does pretty much the same thing, but these lack precision or something. Locking them in place feels a little too much in the Harbor Freight camp. The side bolsters are nice design with the recessed grab handles and cup holders. I can't tell is the dash and glove box plastics really poorly executed attempt at imitation carbon fiber, or are they just flirting with the look? In any case, I'm not a fan, and these are on the flimsy side. The helm seat layout is killer. Honestly, they put a lot of thought into this control layout and dash. As usual, stepping in is tight, and now you get the added bonus of rubbing your ding-dong on both the shifters and the steering wheel. I applaud the effort of the steps up to the deck, but shoo, it's an exercise in balance, coordination, and memories of Twister. There's only one way up, okay? Follow along. Right hand handle, right foot step, left foot step, left hand dash, right foot step, and you're up. Seriously, I'm not kidding around. This is the very specific order you have to use. Out of order, and you'll either get your feet tangled or stuck in a knot. Pretty risky having people step inches away from your shifters, but okay. If you're by yourself, don't slip or you're kicking the boat in reverse, which leads to a whole new set of problems. Exterior-wise, no complaints. Seriously, I don't have any. The front lo anchor locker is a nice bonus. The plexi for the wind deflector is pretty thick. And the graphics are all in gel. A rarity these days. Well, except for the Baja logo itself, which is vinyl. Not sure why, but all right. So the big question, how's the drive? Um, I don't know. It was snowing when I filmed this, and I just didn't want to wait on this one. Which I know sucks, because I really hate giving reviews of performance boats without being able to review the actual, well, performance part. But luckily, there are about a thousand opinions online about this ride, so there you go. Alright, fine, let's get into the brand stereotype. Look, it's a tough place to be as a Baja owner, because opinions on this brand are pretty divided. First off, all cruisers hate you and your Baja. Why? Because it's a go-fast. You're a loud annoyance. And sure, that's normal fare for any go-fast owner, but unlike some of the others, you also get dissed by some of your own kind. Other go-fasts, they don't really care about you either. You are the Camaro to their BMW or Porsche club. Sure, you're just as fast, maybe even faster in some cases, and can handle just as well in most conditions. But you're not the same. You're a mass production boat. Your brand is popular. Your boat was not some hand-built custom order. You didn't pay top-tier money for your ticket in. But then there's another element that I think plays a role. Baja offered a lineup to include entry-level boats 20 feet and below, which I am always a fan of. But that also means you are now getting new boaters showing up at the ramp and committing all the usual rookie mistakes, but doing it louder and with more flair. So watching a rookie in his Baja smash into a dock, cut you off, or just fail at basic courtesy is always grating on the nerves, but somehow when the boat has a huge Baja logo on the side, it's turned up to 11, and that sticks with boaters. And let's be honest, there are people out there that bought this boat purely for the styling, because, well, that was a very strong draw out of this boat. I mean, the previous Model 29 Outlaw was available with a single-engine big block. A 29 Go Fast with a single engine? That's like bragging about owning a Fox Body Mustang with a four-banger. Then, inevitably, come the cracks of how it was a Brunswick boat, and therefore it has direct DNA linkage to Bayliner. But not before we hear the endless questions of, where's the steps? Are they too stupid to design a boat with steps? Is it laziness? And so it goes on and on, to the point the bandwagon has turned into a double-decker bendy bus. To be fair, it is slightly, slightly a bargain go-fast. That's not me bashing, that's just literally where it's stacked in the pricing back in the day. That said, miles per hour per dollar, it was a fantastic buy. Yes, there are others in the same price bracket, but this one does have a little more going for it, especially if you're a fan of the style department, over something like, say, a Checkmate. I mean, there are not a lot of boats from this era that were hitting mid-70s in this price range. So there you go. That's the best I can tell where the stigma comes from. Is it justified? In some cases, shit yeah. I've seen Baja owners that couldn't tell you what end of an anchor to use. Is this all of them? No. While you can argue some of the styling elements have not quite weathered the test of time, or maybe just aren't at classic level yet, they never got criticized for being ugly or slow, and that's a testament to the outlaw. You don't have to like it. But if you're going to be honest with yourself, you respect it. And as go-fasts in the market are just about all but extinct, 
I think what was once contempt towards the brand has really softened to be merely ribbing and harmless trash talk. Many will claim they've never liked them, but I think for some it's the equivalent of pulling on their pigtails and calling them names because deep inside, they struggle to accept that these boats really helped give shape to an era of fast stern drive machines. But I'm sure you guys have plenty to add, so feel free to hit me up in the comments because if there's truly something more we need, it's another internet debate on Bajas. As always, thanks for watching, guys.